Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Today in this video tutorial, what we're going to be discussing is how do you actually use lap time simulation and where it fits in to your processes on a race weekend and in preparing for a race weekend. The motivation for this tutorial actually came from a discussion I recently had with a colleague of mine. And in that discussion, he and I were trading some ideas about what you actually use lap time simulation for, etc, etc. And he made a comment to me that a lot of people really don't appreciate uh, what it's for. And, and typically, you'll find that team managers, mechanics, etc, etc, sometimes they'll turn around to you and say, hey, mister, what sort of lap time are we going to do today? Or how fast is she going to go? And while these in itself are perfectly valid, uh, valid and interesting questions, it really does miss the point about what you actually use lap time simulation for. And here's the key. What you use simulation and lap time simulation for in particular is to create a representative environment of your race car on the PC that will do exactly what the real car does. I have often said that I will happily trade a second's worth of lap time accuracy to ensure the model does exactly what the real car does. Now, I can't speak for other simulation packages, but I can tell you with chassis sim that if you've done your modeling right and you've done and you've dotted all your uh, you've dotted all your i's and you crossed all your t's, the the lap time will come as a byproduct. But really though, what we're trying to do using chassis sim is to basically create an environment where we can basically run a virtual test that will basically tell us where to go. That is the point of the exercise, and this is why lap time simulation can be such a powerful tool. Now, in this particular example, what, I'm, uh, what I've done is I've basically run up a few simulations using a, uh, uh, using a Formula 3 car, and as you can see, I've loaded my Formula 3 template, I've loaded the circuit, and I've loaded my baseline setup. And what I've done, and what I did, was I basically ran through a little test. So basically, I took the baseline, I upped the front ride height by 2 mil, I increased the front springs by 100 pounds force, and I increased the rear springs by 100 pounds force. And you can see here that what I've done here, I've noted what the setup was, the lap time was, I've noticed that I've uh, put, uh, I've located where the data file is going, and I've put a little comment about where the data, or uh, what the data was telling us. Now, okay, these changes here are probably very, very simple changes, but nonetheless, though, what I wanted to do is to illustrate the process. And as you can see here, when we run a simulation, you've got to be almost as rigorous as this as if you were running an actual test, which is what, uh, which is exactly what we've done here. So, what I need to do on the chassis sim side of things is I've loaded in my car. I'll go to simulate, and what I'm going to do is I'll say that this is my baseline. I choose the logger I'm going to export to, which is in this case just MoTeC Interpreter. I'm then basically going to basically log this to file. And I choose a data file, which is my baseline. And I'll click on Open, click on OK. Then I go to Simulate. Now, I've already exported this data, so there's no point in redoing it again. But I would leave this flag on if I hadn't exported it. If I do wish to export my data, I should say. And I click on Start Simulation. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically running a virtual lap. I'm running a test. And this is why I always am very adamant that every time you run a simulation in anger, you must export it, you must treat it as a test, you must log it to data. Because what that enables you to do is that basically allows the simulator to integrate with your other tools that you would typically do. And this makes the whole process very, very seamless which is why we at Chassis Sim are very, very keen on making sure that, uh, uh, that uh, we at Chassis Sim are very, very keen about making sure that, you, uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that we can plug, in, uh, plug into whatever data acquisition package that you're using. So, that's logged my data. And so typically what I will then do is I'll open up my data analysis package, which in this case is MoTeC Interpreter. And I simply, now because I've already loaded in the file, you can see, boom, this is my simulated lap. This is my virtual test. And this is really, really, really key. And this, to me, illustrates the money shot of why race car simulation and lap time simulation is so important. Have a look at this. For all intents and purposes, this is actual data 
from your car. Except here's the thing. We didn't need to spend a day or two prepping the car. We didn't need to spend two hours or so going from the shop to the, uh, uh, to the racetrack. And we didn't need to spend about 15, 20 minutes talking to the driver, getting the mechanics to make a change, and then basically, uh, and then basically running it on track. All we had to do to make a change is click on here, click on um, the parameter we wish to change, click on OK for what the relevant parameter is. So I just reset the ride heights to um, the baseline, and we are done. That is the power that simulation affords you, and this is why it's so uh, and this is why it's so critical. And what I can do is I can overlay other data with this. So in this case, I'll just simply um, I'll just simply reload the the test. Uh, I'll simply re uh, I'll simply reload the test file that I had, and I'll click on OK, click on F4. All of a sudden. This uh, uh, all of uh, all of a sudden, I can see basically what uh, I can see all uh, I can see all of a sudden what my seed times are doing, where I'm basically trading off. Once again, it's as if I have just run a virtual test session, and I'm looking at what the differences are. This really really illustrates what you use lap time simulation for, because you can do this prepping for um, a test or a race. You can do this between sessions to figure uh, to figure out what's going on, and indeed, you can actually overlay simulated to actual data to double check that the car is actually working. This is one of the myriads of, of uses that you can use for lap time simulation. See, it's not just about the lap time. It's not just it's not just about the lap time. The lap time is the full stop. The money shot is everything that you're seeing in here, and the fact that you've basically you've done a virtual test. You've imported it into a data analysis package of your choice, and you're reviewing it like you review actual data. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolute game changer, and this is what you truly use simulation for.